Hello my crafty friends, this video is part one in a two part series for my August design team project for Louise Heinzel. You will see later in the video that I'm using her fussy cut vintage people um, as part of these junk journal background pages that I'm making. I will have all the details of her Etsy store and this listing in the description of this video. I'm going to be making two coordinating background pages. I start by using an A4 piece of watercolour paper. I wanted to use the watercolour paper as it's super absorbent and I'm going to be using the Tim Holtz Oxide inks and it gives it a beautiful effect when you're using a porous material. I'm starting off by adding a few pieces of vintage music paper and some text from a journal and some other pieces of text that I have and then I'm just putting a thin layer of gesso on the top because I don't want them to be too bright, I want to tone them down a bit. I'm now adding texture paste through the stencil using my palette knife. The stencil I'm using is the Tim Holtz stencil and the design is stone. I'm now going to start adding the colour. I start with the lightest colour first. In this instance it's a gold. I'm using an acrylic paint for the gold. It's more of it's a metallic. It leaves it a beautiful sheen in the end. So I dab it in certain areas. I use a wet paint brush just to help let the colour flow a little bit and then I also use my little water spray bottle to help disperse the paint and then I lift the pages um, in different directions to let the paint run through in the grooves of where the stenciling was left. Next I'm using some oxide ink. I'm just I'm not spraying it on, I'm just using drops of it. This is called tea dye, it's also a Tim Holtz product, and as you can see it's a darker tone than the gold. So it's just I'm gonna go from lightest to darkest. And with the oxide inks, they when they dry, they leave a beautiful design that doesn't always dry evenly. It's the oxide in the ink, and you'll see as we progress through the project the beautiful effects it leaves. And I'm just leaving it to run. Randomly, it's going to blend. I'm letting it just do its own thing. This is a really fun part of the process. I really enjoy doing this and I encourage you to give it a go too and see how fun it is to create these background pages. This is the next color. This is brushed corduroy. And now for contrast, I'm adding the darkest color, which is a brown. This is an acrylic paint that I'm using, and I'm doing it mainly on the edges and letting the dark areas run through. And as you can see, it really highlights the white bits of the stenciled area, and I really, really love that look.
Once it's dry, and that happens pretty quickly if you have a drying tool, I'm going to add the embellishments. I have here the printed out fussy cut vintage people from Louise Heinzel. There's little children and adults, which I really like, and these are available in the same listing, either in sepia or black and white. I'm going with a black and white version. And also recently she has listed them as a physical item. So not digital, if you're not able to print, you can actually purchase them ready cut out, ready to use in your project. So I selected this one and then I'm just going to find a way to decorate it on the page. I love using frames. I think it finishes off your embellishment cluster normally quite well. So I use them quite a bit and I'll be using them in this project too. I'm adding some stamping. This is an acrylic stamp of script with just some black ink. To try and make the vintage people the focal point and for them to pop off the page, they need some kind of a background, otherwise they blend in a little bit too much with the background that I've made. So I've just taken a piece of, it's from a vintage invoice that I found, so it's just like handwriting and I thought that suited it quite well. And then I have some die cuts that I'm adding, I have another little gold frame, two butterflies and some vintage rulers. These are just die cuts that I've found in my local craft shop. Over the years I've just been collecting them and I'm just going to stick everything down. I'm just placing it first and then I'm sticking it down with some with glue stick and some with a hot glue gun. I have purposefully left the frame white just so it's a contrast to the rest of the page and it, I think it pops off the page a little bit more. I've had the question before when I've created these background pages with watercolour paper, isn't the paper too thick to use in a journal? Yes it is, you could use it, but what I tend to do with these is I photocopy them. So I photocopy them in colour and then I use the copy in my journals or I can also cut that up and make tags and other elements for the journal. So this is more just like a template you could say that can be reused multiple times. And my first page is finished. I'm just going to lift it up to the camera in regular speed just so you can see all the details and the colors and how the oxide inks actually blend. It gives it a beautiful effect and I really 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 love the way it works out. Now if you don't have oxide inks it's not the end of the world. You can use acrylic paints or watercolors. You might not get the exact same effect but it will still come out really really good. I'm not going to create the second page in the set. I'm going to use exactly the same method and the same techniques like I did in the first and I'm not going to really talk through this like I say it's exactly the same. I'm going to put it at a higher speed just so you can see it come together but if you do want to know details of how things were done you can just go back to the beginning of the video to the first page.
and that's page two of the set. I do hope you enjoyed watching this video and the process. I hope you have been inspired to create your own. I would really love it if you subscribed to my channel and hit the little bell button so you can get notifications when my new videos come up. Do keep an eye out for part two in this series where I create a tag and an index card. Remember, all the details are in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.